Hey everyone, this is Leslie with Color Art, and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today's topic, what are twinkling H2Os? Twinkling H2Os are absolutely brilliant watercolors, but they're not in the packaging that we are used to seeing. Traditionally, you see watercolors come in a tube, a strip pan, watercolor pencils, or water-soluble pastel. So why are twinkling H2Os in their own jars? In my experience, strip pan watercolors get a hole in the cake and bits of color will fall out or the colors run together. Or in the case of the watercolor tube, the metal tube dries out with the paint in it and then you have to cut it with a scissor, risking that you're going to cut your hands. With twinkling H2Os, there's no waste. You can use them to the last drop. A few of the colors in today's project are available in the Leslie's Pick of the Month, available at ColorArt.com. Next up, Direct Color to Rubber. Okay, well the first step is to activate these with water. I think one of the hardest parts of playing with my twinkling H2Os is the time I have to wait for them to soften. Five minutes for small projects. Um, 15-20 minutes if I want to transfer some nice creamy watercolor paste to my palette for a larger project. The deeply etched rubber of the Fred Millet stamps are perfect for this technique. I have my paper towels for blotting and my water receptacle for rinsing out the brush. The first color that I'm painting with is this gorgeous chestnut brown and I'm going to start painting with my paintbrush directly on the stamp, working this creamy paste. I'm basically inking up the stamp, working this creamy paste all the way up at the base of the leaves. It's very important after you rinse off your brush to squeeze out all the water. You do not want to introduce water on the stamp. You're trying to keep this twinkling H2O paste as creamy as possible as you're working up the stamp. Rinse out again, squeeze out the water. Now I'm working with deep coral. Again, I'm going to keep building up this color next to the last color I just used. Working all the way up, working all the way up, and just brushing this wonderful creamy paste on the stamp. Okay, next color is olivine. You can see there's a pattern here now. It's okay that the olivine's going into the orange. Olivine actually has a little red in it, so they're more compatible than you think. Okay, um, as I'm working with olivine, I'm going to make sure that I'm going up the veins of all the leaves with the olivine and down that stem. Next color is key lime. This is going to add some beautiful accents and add light to our piece. So I'm going to work on the tips of the leaves. I've kind of decided where the light's going to go. And I'm just going to work my way around these leaves, adding the key lime, creamy paste, keeping that paste nice and creamy, not adding any additional water. Last color, Guatemalan green. And again, same thing. I'm going to work my way around these leaves, trying to find an area that's open, maybe create a creative accent, running a little bit of Guatemalan green down that vein. Colors look nice and even. So we're ready to mist. Now I'm raining from on top. I'm do, creating a rain effect. You can't really see the bottle in the video. Place your cardstock down and press gently hitting all four corners. Repeat the process by misting again and stamping. Then you're going to mist again and stamp. But this time there's so much water Take a look. I can miss stamp stamp on the last one. I don't need to reapply water. Average images off of one application of color is 8 to 12 images. I've gotten up to 32 on some. And there you have it. Project complete. Your basic introduction to direct color to rubber. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.